Hello chess friends, I am back again with uh, yet another video and this video is part of a series about analyzing games of Rishi Anand from World Championship matches and candidates matches and this series is in view of the coming World Championship match in Chennai between Anand and Carlson. So, this was the game that made Vishyam and the world champion for the first time and it was uh, in year 2000 and this was a knockout tournament organized by FIDE in Delhi and then finally in Tehran, Iran. So, it is not that the first time Anand is going to play in India for World Championship match. Before, before that also he played in India in a FIDE tournament and at this time of the match there were two rival organizations. One was PCA largely backed by uh, world number one Kasparov at that time and the newly crowned classical world champion Vladimir Kamenik didn't pass it, participate in this FIDE event and so Gary Kasparov also ordered it but uh, apart from that uh, most of the top 25 players on FIDE list participated in excluding Anatoly Karpo and Ye Chiang Chun so this was the final game and about, about at this time Anand was uh, leading the final match between Anand and Shiro with two and a half point to one and uh, to one half point in three rounds so what Anand needed was a win to finish this uh, final match and for Shiro it is very difficult situation because he has to win all remaining games to become the world champion so it was a very difficult uh, situation for Shiro and what was played in the game was French advanced variation and it was a very practical choice by Shiro to create imbalance and trying to win. So let's have a look at this game. E4 was played by Anand. E6 French. E5. Knight C3, Knight F6. And now advanced variation of the French defense by Anand. Knight C2, E2. C5. And here the most popular move is C3 and that is also preferred by chess engines. So what was played here in the game was F4 but let's have a look at this C3 move first. C3, Knight F3, Queen B6 and A3 and this actually can be transposed from various other move orders. So let's go back and check F4 move now. F4, Knight C3. F6, A3 and this is the same position except white in inserted moves F4 and Knight to F3. This up E7 and first surprise of the game H4 and this was novelty by another. Certainly he wanted to win this game so to finish the match and this was a very practical choice as here black is not bad at all in or black king is not in any kind of danger if black castles on the king side and in fact zero castles on the king side but uh, h4 was a practical choice and maybe it has nothing to do with the theory or maybe it was home preparation so after zero castle another surprise rook h3 and Rook actually is not doing right now anything here but Rook, Rook is going to play very important role in supporting C3 pawn laterally afterwards so Shiro played A5 and instead of B4 Han played B3 to create confusion and chaos and trying to play on the both side of board ignoring his king safety so what Shiro played was c7, knight e2 g1, very passive move and here actually black certainly is very better after a move like 
root 2 be 8 that is what was suggested by chess engines and after that black has a long lasting small advantage but what was played in the game was a4 after that Raman played b4 takes c5 and this was the first capture on the 14th move of black so till this point not a single pawn or piece was captured and here now we are going to have a long sequence of captures on the e5 square so f takes e5 and a knight sacrifice for two central pawns and this is a very practical choice considering white's king still is in center and this actually was also preferred by stock he says white king is really exposed and after this exchange is there are I was thinking about rook to e3 but it is really very very dangerous to rook to e3 it is almost game over because now when bishop takes h4 king cannot move to d2 square because rook can check from f2 square here and even sacrificing on f1 is possible in certain lines so this was almost like end of the game so what was played in the game was queen e2 and that was the only move probably and now here you can see rook is defending the c3 pawn laterally otherwise queen takes c3 is almost game over if rook is not there so bishop takes h4 queen c7 was suggested by stockfish instead of bishop takes h4 but this is a very practical choice as if rook takes bishop then we can see queen can capture on c3 square delivering a check and winning a rook so that is not possible let's have a rook let's have a look at that variation rook takes queen here actually white still has slight material advantage but king is very exposed and considering the pawn mass in the center this was not a option and then would have considered during the game so going back to the game variation e1 queen f6 knight f3 and this was a bad choice this was clearly blunder queen takes c3 now because after bishop b2 now that dead bishop is really very very active on the long diagonal check king moves to e2 and here if bishop goes to f6 and bishop takes f6 and there is no problem for white instead if we move bishop to e7 right to d2 and still surprise here surprisingly stock is suggested that uh, queen d1 move played by anand when bishop takes f5 was played here in this position and here white is actually okay in view of a very interesting variation what was played was sub f5 and you can see here queen 2 d1 was played during the game and i was checking various other possibilities like knight takes c5 and bishop takes c5 and rook h5 so let's have a look at this 
the moves. Knight takes e5 first. Then after rook to c8 from rook e to c8. It is almost winning for black now as white cannot capture in this direction. Black can pile rooks on c5 and it is almost over with this bishop looking at this long diagonal. So this was not a choice. So here let's have a look at the rook h5 move. Rook h5 then black can simply capture on b4 and here giving up the exchange but still it is a lot of material up but considering the pawn mass and white's king safety this is not also good and another possibility here is king to d2 that we should not consider because this is almost over after king and here knight d2 is also not possible in view of queen c2 checkmate most important variation here maybe was uh, bishop taking on the e5 square and in many of those lines actually white was better and here actually white can survive but this is very counterintuitive and very difficult to play during a match during a world championship match especially so what was played in the game was very practical solution queen to d1 and after e4 queen's exchange and here Shido has a big center with four pawns but somehow Anand managed to eliminate all the threats Especially now this uh, the square bishop of white is very strong on the long diagonal stopping almost all pawns from moving and here bishop here it was forced to exchange bishops because white cannot move in view of uh, move e, e2 by black so he may lose bishop for nothing so exchange and here it seems that Pawns on e6, e th uh, sorry, e3 and b3 connected pass pawn on sixth rank of black is really dangerous, but it is not so. Quite successfully, deals with all the threats, and here there are various different possi possibilities. Knight takes e2 is really losing in view of this variation. Here black is clearly winning. Another possibility is king to b3. Here also after g4 and then king to b2 or knight to g1 e4 here in these lines it's really very difficult for white to survive so after the d4 if knight goes to e2 then rook can capture this and then knight captures this and black is winning here because knight cannot capture on e2 because of this lateral pin another possibility was king b2 but here also 
situation is not very good for black and on the black's 41st move d3 it is really almost the winning for black now so it has to be careful even in the ending as it seems here black is better much better because of this one on e2 and black king may come to escort this pawn to queen I haven't checked all the variations to the end but this is a possibility and maybe considering all these variations what Anand preferred in this position was king to d3 and that was the winning move after king d3 all these moves are almost forced and here in this uh, position zero resign because he's losing a lot more material here rook cannot move to any safe square like if rook moves to f2 then king takes e3 and there is no hope so black was a uh, stop visit that black is almost uh, six pawns down here that is a lot of material so in view of forcing continuations zero actually resigned in this position and anand became the world champion for the first time so leave your comments and questions on youtube thank you